Okay, welcome back to Song of Songs. We're in chapter 6. We had just started uh, on our last video in verse 1. So I just want to make sure you have the uh, reference, Matthew 25, 8 and 9, with verse 1. And it's interesting, it is, verse 1 is the cry of the church, crying out to the beloved, crying out to the bride and saying, where has your beloved gone? Where has he turned? Why are they asking that we may seek him with you? They want to seek him also. They see the beloved. They see the beloved emanating out of the face of the bride saints that are in front of them. And, and the bride saints are saying, we're running after the Lord. And the, and the people in the church are saying, you're the most beautiful church people we've ever seen. We want to run after him too. And so they're asking this. Then verse 2. So the bride answers the, cry, or the, uh, the church's question, where has your beloved turned? So she says, my beloved has gone down to his garden, to the beds of balsam, to pasture in the gardens and gather lilies. Very interesting. Notice it says it's in uh, italics, his flock, which means it's not in the Hebrew. To pasture in the the garden, actually gardens, plural, and gather lilies. He's gone to his garden where he pastures and he gathers lilies. With that, chapter 5 in Song of Songs, verse 1, which says, I have come into my garden my sister bride. Ah, so that's where his garden is, is his sister bride. I have gathered my myrrh along with my balsam. I have eaten my honeycomb and my honey. I have drunk my wine and my milk. Eat, friends, drink and imbibe deeply, O lovers. So the garden is the bride. So her answer back to him is, my beloved is partaking of his garden. The beds of balsam. He's pasturing in the gardens. He's gathering lilies. Turn with me, please, to Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 27. Jesus speaking here, and let me uh, read for a few verses. He says, And who of you, being wor uh, worried, can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, neither do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the flames, will he not much more clothe you, uh, you men of little faith? <laughs> There is a deep spiritual truth here. There is throughout the whole book of Song of Songs. We want to, get, we want to, to be sure and catch what the Lord is showing us. He says that he goes to his gardens, plural, and he gathers lilies. Now, why would the king go and gather lilies? He has maidens that do that. He tells a whole group of maidens, go gather me a bunch of lilies and make whatever he wants and just throw them on the floor for my delight or whatever but he's doing it he's gathering lilies and then the, the Lord himself says in Matthew uh, 6 uh, 27 28 29 why are you worried about uh, the clothing observe the lilies of the field how they grow they don't toil or spin and yet they're more beautiful than even Solomon in all his glory now Solomon wore robes of gold. So how can a lily be more beautiful than Solomon? There's a deep spiritual truth that Jesus is saying here. And that's this. Think about it. The greater Solomon, Christ, goes to his garden, which is his bride, and he's gathering lilies. For what? 
Well, to be clothed. To make clothes. He's saying here in Matthew, why are you worried about clothing? This is spiritual. What is it that, that the bride is clothed in? Robes of white. What is it that Laodicea has? Nothing. They're naked. What is it that they're supposed to have? Robes of white. What color is a lily? <laughs> the robes of white are made out of the lilies. They grow in the gardens. And Jesus says that that robe is more beautiful, more glorious than the best that Solomon ever wore with his threads of gold and purple and royalty. And yet that robe of righteousness, which is what the lilies represent, are more beautiful than even Solomon. Verse 3. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. He who pastures his flock among the lilies. Now notice the words his flock are supplied. They're not there in the Hebrew. He who pastures among the lilies. So he's in the lilies. He's pasturing in the lilies. Why? Well, verse 2 told us he gathers the lilies there. He gathers them there. That's exactly why. Christ leads his church among the lilies. Why? To clothe them in them. To clothe them in righteousness. Let's turn to Colossians. Let's go there for a minute if I can get my, my mouse to work. There we go. Colossians chapter 3, and starting at verse 12. Let me go there. Okay. Read for a few verses here. So, Paul is speaking to the Colossian church. So, as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, Kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing uh, with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Now, it's interesting, the words put on, so in verse 14, put on love. In verse 12, put on a heart of compassion. Put on all of these attributes. Is Strong's number 1746 in the Greek, and it literally means to put on your clothes. Put on your clothes. Get dressed. Put on your clothes of what? Righteousness. Put on the clothes, the lilies of the valley. Put on your righteousness. And what is the righteousness? It says it right here. Colossians chapter 3. And there's much more. Read the whole chapter. But Colossians 3, verse 12 to 15. Put on what? Put on a heart of compassion. Put on kindness. Put on humility. Put on gentleness and patience. Bearing with one another. Forgiving one another. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord also forgave you, you should do also. This is putting on a robe of righteousness. This is the lilies that grow in the garden of the Lord in your heart. In your heart. If you have sown seeds of righteousness, you have to sow seeds of righteousness. How? By practicing these things. By practicing these things. And if you do the, these things, if you practice them, you're going to find the lilies growing up in the garden and the Lord himself will come and weave them into a beautiful garment that you wear. But you have to put them on. And just as you put them on, you can take them off. And sometimes the devil tempts us and, 
and pressures us and pushes us to take off those robes of righteousness so that we can blame someone else, so that we can judge someone else, so we can fall into a spirit of unbelief, so we can fall into a spirit of fatigue and, and I don't want to be nice to them because I just don't feel like it today. Put on those robes of righteousness, the lilies that have grown in your garden that the Lord has gathered. Put on those lilies that the Lord has gathered and you will be clothed. If you don't put them on, you'll be found naked and you'll be left behind. Because if, and, and it's funny how much of the church is naked. And they sit there and they say, See, I've got robes of righteousness. Why? Because of all the wonderful works that I'm doing. If it's not in here, it's not out here. It has to be in here. It has to be in the heart. We have to put it on daily. Jesus said, take up your cross daily. Die to self daily. Forgive 70 times 7 daily. Not, oh, I forgave them 70 times 7 over all the years. No, no, no. Daily. Daily. If people practice this, there would be no one with aught against me today that has left this church. I don't have aught against them. I've forgiven them. And I have. I have nothing in my heart. As a matter of fact, when they come back, I receive them with the open arms of gladness and forgiveness but they have ought still against me and against us. And so it keeps them out of what? The call of God. It keeps them from going on in God. Instead, they walk in bitterness and blame. And so the devil has robbed them, yet they feel righteous in their walk. And in their so-called righteousness, they don't realize that they're poor, blind, and naked. Why? Because unforgiveness still reigns in their hearts. And if unforgiveness reigns in their hearts, they have no robes made of the lilies of the valley. Verse 4. You are as beautiful as Tizra, my darling, as lovely as Jerusalem, as awesome as an army with banners. This is amazing. This is, uh, there's so much in this verse. It's just incredible. Tizra is the northernmost city of Israel. The northernmost city. So it is literally the city of the north. The city of the north. Let me turn here to... Let me turn. Let me, uh, let me click here to Psalms chapter 48. Okay, Psalms chapter 48 uh, and verse 1 and 2. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Verse 2, beautiful in elevation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great king. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, I love that verse. I just love that verse. Oh, praise God. So what is he saying here? Solomon says, You are as beautiful as Tizra, my darling, a beautiful, ornate city in the northern part of Israel. Typologically, though, it represents that northern city in the very tip of the country of God where the Lord comes from, and where his bride comes from. Because the bride comes from the same place that the Lord himself has come from. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. I think we're out of time. So I'm going to uh, stop right here and pick this up again in just a moment. Lord bless.